For the sixth technique, I'm going to show you how you can create patterns. And for this, I'm going to use this illustration of bamboo. So let's say, for instance, we're designing packaging for tea, and I just want to create kind of a background texture using all these uh, bamboo images here. So what we're going to do is make a couple selections. We're going to use the same technique we use for the beauty, uh, te the beauty effects, in that we're going to use channels here, and I'll show you how this works. So over here, uh, if you are working in the Essentials workspace, you should have layers, channels, and paths. We're gonna select channels. Now this is an RGB image, so the top channel here is all three channels married together. Then I've got red, then I've got green, and then I've got blue. And what I wanna do is kinda of use these to create a pattern. I'm looking for something that has some contrast. I don't think the green layer is going to really work for me, but the red or the blue one might. But here's the thing. Again, you never want to really screw with the actual channels here. So to do this, to make selections, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this red channel. So I'm going to grab it and drag it down here onto the new layer panel, which will duplicate it. And I'm going to call this color one. I don't know what colors I'm using yet, but this will just separate it. Now, here's the thing. When we're talking about selections, white is selection and black is the masked area. So this is a little backwards for what I want. So what you want to do is go up here under image, come down here to adjustments. We want to flip that. I want the bamboo to actually be the selection and not the white background. So under adjustments, come down here to invert and there you've got an inverted image of that channel. I'm going to do the same thing with the blue channel. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to invert it. So image adjustments and then come down here to invert. I'll call this color two. Again, I don't know what colors I'm using yet. And once we've done that, I'm going to go back to layers here. Right? Sorry, let's click on the RGB image. Now go back to layers. Now for this, I don't even actually need the background image on here. I'll show you how this works. I'm going to add a layer in here. And I'm going to turn off the background image, which was my original illustration. Under selection, I'm going to come over here and do load selection. All right. Now... Here are my two selections, color one, and there you can see the selection. And I'm not really completely sure of what colors I'm going to use yet, but just to get started here, uh, maybe I'll select more of a kind of lighter green color here. Now what I'm going to do is under the edit drop down menu, come down here and fill, and I can fill it with that. And now you can see if I deselect this, I've kind of got this kind of wispy bamboo pattern here. Now what I'm going to do is add another layer and I'm going to go ahead under selection and come down here and load selection and I'm going to find color two. And you're like, well, it's the same image it is, but I'm going to show you how you can play with that. Let's choose a new color here. So maybe what I'll do is choose something that's a little bit more in the kind of ochre colors here. Again, these may not be my final colors. We're going to play with that. Go ahead and hit OK. Now what I'm going to do is fill that in. So in the Edit drop-down menu, come here to Fill. And I'm going to deselect it. Now these exist as separate channels so you can move this. You can see how we can already start making patterns in here. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and create the uh, canvas that I want to do my pattern on. So for everything here we're doing six by nine inches. I just did command N for new file. Six by nine. Always make sure you're working at the 300 DPI rev resolution. Go ahead and hit create. Now I'm going to come back again to this image I was working with here. And because I want to drag these layers in, what I'm going to do is tear this out so it's not nested anymore. And now what I can do is I can drag these color layers I created into my new canvas. All right. So what you can do with these, we can play with the color on here. 
just so these images don't re, uh, uh, reproduce, you can change the size on these if you want to. You can do more than two if you want to, more than two colors. We could actually even take this one. Uh, we could also take this and uh, flip it if we wanted to. Let's see here. I don't want to flip the canvas. I'm going to under the edit. If you come down here to transform, we can flip this horizontally. So that's going to create more of pattern in here. So again, we're going on the assumption we're doing kind of T packaging. I'm going to add a background color in here and I'm just playing around and seeing what looks good. So I have a background color here. I'm going to fill it in. So you can see how you can start playing around with color. We can change the size on this if we want to. Now I just randomly chose these colors and now that I'm seeing it all together, maybe I don't like it. Uh, what you can do is change the color multiple ways. The easiest way is select the layer, come up here under the image dropdown menu and do adjustments. Here's where we can do hue and saturation. And let's say I just, I changed my mind. I don't like that color. You can use the color sliders here to move the colors around. We can play with the saturation of the color here. You can play with how light, which might be an interesting effect if you go all the way to white, or you could come all the way to black. Might be a little too dark for packaging design. So you can use these colors, uh, these sliders to create different colors in here. And I'll do the same on this one. Again, you can do the image drop down menu to adjustments, hue and saturation. Again, to change the color, you use these sliders at the top for hue. You can play with how intense you want that color here, or you can play with how light or dark you want the color here. And there's one other option you have on this. And again, because I did the selection for the entire uh, bamboo illustrations. I have the entire image here if you want to move these around or adjust the size on here, however you want in here. Here's another option you have is you can come up here on each of these layers. Currently the blending mode is set at normal, which means you're seeing 100% uh, color in that selection. This is another option. You can go down here and play with your blending modes and see if there's a look that you like. And this will also help familiarize yourself with the different options you have with blending modes. So you can come down here. Some are better than others on here. Some are barely noticeable on here. So if you're not familiar with blending modes, you might want to test drive a lot of different looks on here and see what looks best to you. All right, so oftentimes, especially with color, it's a lot of trial, trial and error. I'm going to go ahead and use screen on this one. And then for this one, maybe I'll try something else. There you can see more vibrant color. There you can see really light. Again, I only want this to function kind of as background color. The other thing you can do too, we're playing with the blending mode on here. You can also play with the opacity. So if I like that green, but it's a little too strong, maybe I knock it back a little bit. So Again, the goal here wasn't to actually show the bamboo. It's to create more of a mood by using the bamboo as a texture on here. These are all still movable. If you want to readjust the placement on anything, you can do that. When you get something that you like, again, you want to do it as you've done on everything. Save this two ways. We're going to save it first as a working file. So it needs to be in the Photoshop doc, uh, uh, format. I'm going to save it to my PSD folder. I'll just call this pattern. And once you've done that, now we can save the, the uh, file that you're going to put in the final document. So the three steps, again, flatten it first. We're going to ch change the blending mode here to from RGB to CMYK. Now, these are those colors that can be really tricky when you deal with these light pastels. So when we switch this, you might see a real noticeable change in it. And you can see it did change. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to go back and change that. 
but just be aware that sometimes when you have very bright and vibrant colors on your screen, when we're dealing with the conventional CMYK printing process, you may end up with duller colors. Usually in CMYK, everything prints a little darker and a little duller than you think it's going to. But we're going to go ahead and work with this. And then we want to save this again in the TIFF format. Find my TIFFs folder here. Change the format here. And again, make sure you select whichever computer system you're on and go ahead and hit OK. And that's how you create pattern from uh, photos or illustrations.